there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Maxwell Stars of Beer Review. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a beer at, from a fellow beer tuber I recently pissed off. Uh, but uh, whatever, deal with it. I'm um, going to take a look at the beer that Beer Gee sent me. Beer Gee's reviews La Gila Chance from uh, Ottawa. Not Quebec, but uh, I almost want to say Quebec. He sees the front flying Frenchman. going to take a look at Fat Tug IPA from Driftwood. Uh, what is it? Driftwood Brewery. That's in BC, Victoria, BC. Uh, take a deep breath, sailor. It's much. It's difficult to fathom, but such monstrous hot bitterness can be foiled by the ample malt buoyancy. This hot monster dwells in, in the deep. Uh, its tendrils, uh, tendrils raised to hoppy nirvana. Seven percent ABV, six fifty, uh, six fifty milliliter by bottle. Uh, I offered this to, to do the do a review with the guys there uh, a week ago. Uh, they didn't want to try this for some reason. Well, I understand Fuzz's opinion, but man, from what I've heard, Fat Tug IPA is considered to be one of the finest IPAs in Canada. And uh, I haven't had a, try, a chance to try this yet, so I really don't know. I'm going by hearsay. Uh, I know that uh, some people have said they liked it, and this is the uh, the, the batch that was uh, sent to Ontario in uh, February, I think. So. I better get to it before it's uh, it's too old. Heck, I know for people like Yord or Joe, it's already too old. It was too old when it was 47 hours old. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, oh. All right, so let's pour it into my Stella chalice. Alrighty, so. Not a lot of sediment. Then again, I haven't gotten to the bottom of the bottle yet. It may have settled. I see a little bit of swirls around there. Almost like it's got octopi in it. It's like swirl. There's like a swirl thingy in there that looks like it's got tentacles. I know your mind just went there, dirty man. Um, yeah, so fair amount of carbonation. Got a decent three-finger head on top of that. It's quite a bit of head, actually. Uh, brassy, golden appearance. A lot lighter than I was ex expecting for 7% ABV, maybe. Doesn't look that bad. It's a little orangey. Slight bit of haze to it. I don't see a lot of sediment in here, as I was describing, but there is some in the in the, in the bottle, so we'll get to that later. Alright, let's give it a sniff. Ooh. So it's almost like... Hints of grapefruit. Orange. Cotton candy, mango, bits of pineapple. Yeah, it's like a fruit medley. It's like a fruit cup or something. Like, you know, in those Del Monte fruit cups where you peel it back? Maybe even a hint of that cherry and the maraschino cherry. That, and that candy syrup. They pack it in. Uh, either way, it smells really appetizing. At about two months too old. Hey, put it on the hatch. Cheers. Ooh. Mm. Wow, that's like a hoppy gut, hoppy fruit drink. It uh, the the smells really play into the taste. You get all that maybe a hint of floral resiny bitterness lingering in the back. I get a main like a mainly like drying out in the finish, but like a long uh, finish of resiny floral hops. And also it's quite sweet. Like a big cotton candy caramel kind of taste going on. Like resting around the edges of the tongue and uh, lingering in the back for a bit. You get this blast of almost sugary cotton candy sweetness. As it washes down the throat. You can almost, um, despite seeing 7% ABV, you can't really, you don't really notice. And it's also delightfully smooth. And uh, thanks to the uh, the mild, um, smooth, creamy car carbonation that it has, it finishes, it feels like it finishes light, but it's a little, like, it's obviously thick from all the sugar. And it's almost thick on the tip, with light in the back. And a very dry, lingering finish. 
Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I approve of that. That's tasty. Um, one of the finest IPAs in Canada. Now the Ten Bitter Years sucks. Yeah, actually, I kind of agree. Right up there with the. Uh, um, yeah, I mean it's a well balanced, well finished IP, uh, IPA. Maybe a little too sweet, but I love the fact that as soon as you take a drink of it, the taste like matches the smell you were getting. Like you were, you're not disappointed. You take a whiff of it, and you're like, hmm, smells like fruit cocktail. Take a drink, tastes like a fruit cocktail, and a tropical fruit cocktail at that. Yes, I've said cock way too many times for one review. So, give that a 425. That's tasty. I uh, really enjoy this. Imagine, though, if you let it get too old, it turned into Melisandre after she took the bracelet off, the, the necklace off. Game of Thrones reference. You know who I'm talking to. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Thanks, Geek. Sorry for the Game of Thrones spoiler there. But, you know, it's more than 24 hours after air date, so it's fair. <laughs> anyway, that's really tasty. Um, I gotta say, the thank you, Geek, for sending that one to me, and I uh, really enjoyed it. I wish I could have shared this with the guys, but for some fucking reason, they didn't want to try it. And I knew this was going to be pretty good. Uh. And it definitely does not disappoint. Tasty motherfucker. Uh. Alright, I'm going to dr uh, drink the rest of this and uh, sit down with a movie or something and um, just finish it off because this ain't going to waste. So thanks for watching Maxwell Stair's beer review of Fat Tug IPA from Driftwood. Thanks for watching. We'll chat with you folks later. Cheers. Cheers.